Let's give that unto the Lord this morning. We worship you, Redeemer. Come on, Tulsa, let's magnify him. This is our last day of peak. Hallelujah, let's love the Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I do not know what all the Lord will do before we leave here today. I I don't want to put God in a box. But I I ask God today. Just help me get my way through this because the heaviness of what I feel is eating my spirit this morning. I believe that, and I heard it said earlier this week, but peak is not an event. Peak is not just a meeting But I believe that peak is destiny for the apostolic church in 2010. I do not have any way of calculating all of the lives that will be forever changed by the word of God and the work of God that's happened in this house this week. Brother Pixler so blessed my spirit Wednesday night reminding us that this truly is our day. Don't ever forget that word. That this is the day the Lord hath made. And yesterday morning, Brother Wesley Jackson in his own inimitable way walked in the Holy Ghost and challenged us. Let's quit provoking God and let's start getting a hold of the promises of the Lord. Tremendous. And what could be said about last night? Teller took us to the depths of the, the Word and Spirit and presence of God and what an awesome anointing was in this house last night. Let me also give my thanks to this great youth development committee for their invitation. Thank you. I believe that tonight only God knows what's going to happen in this house. I want to say thank you to the great saints of God from Hilltop that's made the journey to help me. The greatest young people and saints in all the world. I love them to death and salute them this morning. And I also want to say, baby, the last three years we've celebrated our anniversary at peak. Happy anniversary. My girlfriend of 33 years, longer than that, but my legal girlfriend, there's an honor afforded me this meeting that has kind of slapped me between the eyes. I'm not the tallest speaker. But I am the oldest. But I still think 
I got a little syrup in my bucket. And the Holy Ghost has talked to my heart. How many is ready for the word of the Lord today? How many is going to help me preach? Oh, let's lift our voice one more time. Unto you, Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22. Ezekiel. Twenty-two. I want to read a few verses. In your hearing, beginning in verse twenty-three, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Son of man, say unto her." Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference, no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And then God said, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me from the land. I believe this morning that God is going to help us in just a few short moments. That standing in front of me are tremendous young people that I have absolute confidence in. That are ready to step into a chasm and fill in a gap and say, here I am, Lord, send me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you. The answer in all of life, as far as I have been able to determine, has always been met by an anointed man of God. Whatever question has ever surfaced through the annals of history, even to the present that we are a part of, The answer has always come from the lips of a preacher that has slipped into oftentimes situations that seemed untenable and unworkable and seemed like there was no answer. But then would come a preacher. 
God has always had a man. God's always had the uncanny ability to look beyond the surface and look past the expectation of humanity. And somewhere in the shadow of life, he would find a man whose heart was holy after the things of God. Can I preach to young people and this conference this morning that the only hope that you have and I have and our world has is the anointed preaching of an apostolic man of God that's not afraid of the adversary nor the issue nor the situation. Can I preach to you today that it matters not what comes our way. I'm going to throw my lot with the anointed man of God. And say preach to me preacher. Because if you've heard from God. The answer that i got to have is inside the anointing that's upon you. I am preaching this morning that hell fears the anointed preaching of the man of God. Can I talk to young people this morning and remind you that the greatest treasure beside the baptism of the Holy Ghost that God has ever blessed you with is when God gave you a pastor, when God put a preacher in your life that said, I'll fight hell, I'll fight every demon, I'll fight every trend, I'll fight hell itself, but nobody's going to rest from my fist. The precious souls of a generation that formed their way to glory. Let me preach a little bit to you of all the people you need to fall in love with. I pray before we leave this house today uh, that a spirit is going to sweep across this tabernacle. And young people say, get your hands uh, off the man of God in my life uh, because he's my key. Oh, hallelujah. There is an unprecedented attack upon ministry today. There is an unprecedented attack upon ministries, families today. I have never in my 52 years heard of so many churches that have been assaulted by spirits that are trying to destroy the voice of the preacher in their life. I have never seen the carnage that's been spread across the landscape of Pentecost than spirits that are trying to shut up, stop and silence the mouth of the man of God. That's one thing I love about Pete is every time I've heard a preacher get behind this desk, there's been a spirit in this house that said, preach to me, preacher, because I've got to have the preaching of the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for singing and thank God for choirs. But oh, thank God for a Holy Ghost. One God, Jesus name. To look at preacher that preaches the word. Come on, let's thank God for the man of God. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for your pastor who service after service uh, hears from God uh, and gets in a pulpit uh, and says, come on, you're not going to hell. Uh, you're not throwing it away. Uh, God's hands on you. God's anointing's on you. You're going to make it. Thank God for the preacher. The day we live in hates preachers.
hates preachers. I have a neighbor directly across from me. He and his wife are both physicians. I've known him for a number of years now. It's kind of funny where we live. After a little bit, my neighborhood realized I'm a preacher. And Brother Young, they they would come to our house. And many is the time that I have answered a knock and a neighbor who I've never been able to officially meet would say, Excuse me, but are you the preacher? I'd say, yeah, that's me. And they would, they would begin to pour out their stuff. And I've had them say, you need to pray for that family. They're, they're fighting in their marriage. You need to pray. There's cancer going in. You need to pray. There's this and there's this. And, and, and yet, yet when I go to talk to them, it's the preacher. My neighbors, my wife and I tried to get them to church. We've talked to them about the things of God, had them to our house. But they were into meditation and yoga. I, my frog legs won't let me do yoga. And they were into, I would talk to him. I, these are physicians. And, and he'd say, we, we went to a retreat where we learned to channel. 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 That's like you turn the knob on the radio. They don't have knobs. Okay, you see, I'm 52. You push the button. You hit the iPod or the but. But she got cancer. She got cancer. They tried hugging trees, still had cancer. <laughs> tried, tried gardening organic style and still had cancer. Tried going to self-help groups and still had cancer. Tried a new pair of Birkenstocks and a new Volvo and still had cancer. And one day the door rang. And there was the doctor. And she said, I'm sorry to bother you. But I've got cancer. And I just, I don't know how to do this, but... Would you pray for me? Now, I need a preacher. The fruit didn't get it done, and the vegetables didn't get it done, and, and the new age didn't get it done. But when my life's on a line, I need a man of God. I'm preaching to you. Don't wait till your world's in trouble to build a bridge to the man of God. There's two things that'll make you pray. Discipline or disaster. And too many people wait for disaster. I'm telling you, build a bridge in your early life. I want to walk with the man of God that's in my life. I need his hand. It's a day of deceitfulness. I don't have time to preach all of this. But if you would study the text of scripture that I read to you, Ezekiel 22 talked about the judgments that were coming upon Jerusalem. It was called a bloody city in my text of scripture. It was a time that they had lost their relationship with God. It was a time that they had shut out the voice of a prophet and a preacher among them. They had become comfortable with their religion. They had become, become comfortable with their little status quo. They had made a profession.
out of preaching. They had made a profession out of being a man of God. And slowly the erosion began to take place upon the people until in verse 7, it was a day of deceitfulness. They begin to be filled with deceit. And it transgressed into a day of despised holiness. I want to tell you, when you lose the voice of the man of God in your life, you're going to start hating the things that have separated you from a sinful world that you've been delivered from. Preacher, you can't preach it hard enough, strong enough, loud enough. Just save me, save me, save me, save me, save me. Oh, Give me a preacher that'll look me in the eye and say that's not the right thing to wear. That's not the right way to wear it. That's not the place we go. We don't do that. We don't go there. Give me a preacher that can't be bought. A preacher that's not for sale. A preacher that hears from God and then talks to me. Revival without holiness is not revival. I said revival without holiness is not revival. Be ye holy, for he is holy. True revival is a holiness revival where we repent, where we get things right, where we put off the world and put on Christ. True revival is a holiness revival. But holiness without revival is not holiness. Baby, you can have your hair stacked up. You can have your skirt right. That's below the knee. Thank you. I'm seeing these skirts get higher and higher and higher. I don't want to look at your knees. Come on. You ain't in the prayer room and wearing your skirt up here. You're not talking in tongues and wanting men to look at your legs. Get that skirt back down where it And while I'm there, get your shirt up. Kind of had to pray with ladies and close my eyes. We need a man of God that says this is the way. Walk ye in it. We need preachers that are not ashamed, not afraid, and can't be bought. Come on, our young people want men of God. Our kids don't want hirelings. They don't want us to quit. They're saying, preach it, 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 preach it. And we'll live it, live it, live it, live it. I'm, I'm here. I might as well say this.
I'm seeing a lot of girls. Now, hang on, girls, because I'm going to talk to the guys. But I'm seeing a lot of girls. I don't know what the deal is. I don't have any girls. I have a woman, a lady, and she don't dress this way. I haven't seen, I haven't seen these girls wear these, these tight pants that show about that far below their skirt. Oh no, you don't understand, those are just tights. Well if they're tights, quit cutting the socks off. I'm going to preach today. Come on, ladies. It's time to be apostolic. One dot, ladies, from the top of your head to the bottom of your flat. This is what happens when you get an old man preaching. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest problems we have right now that I feel like hitting on. And that's social networking. Now, now, well, no, forget that. I'm not even going to qualify that. Now, I don't know how to twitch or whatever they call that thing. I don't do that. I don't twitch. I just learned how to do text messaging. But I'm not into twitching. Unless it's in the Holy Ghost. There's more people. You spend hours twitching every day. But you won't bend your fat little knee in prayer. Just ate breakfast. Who cares? I just weighed. Who cares? On my way to work. Who cares? I tell you what, if you'll get in the prayer room, you won't have the twins, baby. The whole world will know they're hooked up in the Holy Ghost. They got something going on. Oh, you're not relative or relevant. Let me tell you what I am. I am dealing with people who are throwing their lives away because of that garbage. I want to tell you, if you want to know something about Facebook, why don't you get your face back into this book and say, God, put it. Put it, put it, put it. 
that's the only Facebook I know how to do. It's that I want your word. It's a day of despised holiness. You're out of date. You're out of touch, honey. I'm not out of touch trying to put marriages back together from people hooking up on the internet. I'm telling you, it's a scourge in the apostolic church. And I'm going to say something about it today. It's hurting us. You preach about stuff like this. And, eh, 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 eh. Wait till your marriage has cancer, baby. You're going to be looking for the man of God. So, oh, 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 oh. You better be careful what you're clicking around on, honey. You're a mouse click away from hell. You're a mouse click away from silencing the voice. Of the man of God in your life. Today I've despised holy. Last week I was in the Philippines. And I'm still a little froggy headed. You know how that goes. How much time I have? That's another thing about getting old. You just forget. I, for, I forget I've only been preaching about five minutes. And, and I went to some Filipino people that I love. They call me Tai Tai. Tai Tai. It's mean dad and Visayan. They said, we had a group here last week. And this group instructed us that we have made a foolish choice to follow your leadership and direction. They told us, interspersed in the story was, they told us while the girls had skirts halfway up their thigh, I forgot. And these caps leave. I don't want to look at your armpit. Thank you very much. Get some clothes on. Get back to an altar and listen to the voice of a preacher and you'll get your clothes back on. They, they told me, is said, Tatai, said they told us we've made a terrible mistake that we got out of a big ship into a little boat. So, my ears, which get larger as you get older, to compensate for your lack of hearing. They, they stood up, and one young preacher said, but I told him to tie that every big ship has little boats. And when the big ship hits an iceberg and it starts sinking, everybody's looking for a little boat. If this is a little boat, thank God for this little boat. But as I look across this house, it don't look like no little boat to me. It looks like an army of young people that say we are one God.
Jesus name come, come I must stop and we're not ashamed come on honey you ought to tell your pastor I don't care where we're going in the Holy Ghost you just stay in that book I'm going to follow you It's a day of despised, a day of sexual perversion. I want to do a Brother Floyd Oden moment. that sink in. It's a day of sexual perversion. But your flesh wants to rise up when the prophet in your life says, you better watch him. You better watch her. You're telling me how to live. You're telling me how to travel. Now you're telling me who I should date. You better believe that I've got a mandate from the Holy Ghost. I want to raise up good, righteous family. Let me tell you something, young lady. If he really loves you, he'll respect you. He won't put a hand on you. If he says, but oh, if you really love me and let me, you got my permission to take your hand and slap him across the face as hard as you can and say, get your hands off of me. But sad to say, women today are more aggressive. Women are aggressive. Young women are aggressive. Brother Coon, not long ago, I was preaching in Mississippi, and I came in late one night and went to the hotel, and I walked into the hotel, and when I walked in the hotel, here comes some drunk flusy. Now look, I'm 52 years old. I'm bald-headed. I'm overweight. I'm still bad. I'm still bad. I said, I'm still bad to the bone though, huh, baby? But I came in late. I was tired. Had my Bible. I'm going up to my room. And some little drunk flusy comes by and says, I like your tie. I said, thank you. She said, and then she followed me. Now look, I'm 52. I'm bald headed. I'm overweight. But I'm still a man. And she said, where'd you get that tie? I said, my wife. I don't know if she did or not, but I said, my wife got me this tie. And she kept on walking. And I'm just, I'm confessing. It scared me. I got, it made me nervous. It just, I'm sorry. It made me nervous. I didn't like that. I didn't like it. So I went to my room and I called my wife. I said, baby, there's a devil. (laughs) 
Baby, there's a devil after me. But I couldn't get a hold of my wife. She wasn't there. So I left, I left it on the answer machine. Call me. Call me. Help me, baby. Call me. Because I had to be at that hotel a few more days. Call me. Because I wanted to make sure. Devil, I want you to know. You ain't going to even get in my mind. I couldn't get a hold of my wife. But I got a hold of Sister Chanel. I called Sister Chanel. And I said, Sister Chanel. There's a devil. There's a devil chasing me. And I want the devil to know that it's not just going to be something in my mind. But I'm sending a message back to hell. You can knock, 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 knock. But I'm not going to open up to you. Because I had a preacher that preached to me. you got to keep your guard up. I gotta live what I preach. I gotta practice what I preach. It's a perverted day sexually. It's a day of greed. It's a day of forgetting God. It's a day of uncleanness. It's a day of barrenness. Too many young people are barren in your spirit. I wonder how many of you have personally won somebody to the Lord yourself. I'm almost where I want to go. It's not the will of God for us to be barren. It's not the will of God for our youth groups to be barren. Our young people ought to be teaching more Bible studies than anybody in the church. Ah. I know, I know some people like to profess how good their youth group looks, but I want to tell you, I want to tell you what I always want to see in my youth group. I always want to see brand new people. I want to see tattooed guys and guys jerking their rings out of their ear and leaving holes in them. I'm not ashamed of that. I want to see girls uh, that's just felt the power of the Holy Ghost uh, coming back to church uh, saying, I don't have it all together yet, uh, but I'm in love with this Holy Ghost. Uh, Come on, come on. Our churches ought to reflect the community we're a part of. I got a young lady in our church that came to me not long, just not long ago. I gotta be careful what I say. I gotta be careful what I say. I gotta be careful. But if you knew the diseases that are ravaging her body, you would, you would shrink back in horror. She, she said, Pastor, I wanna put my hair up. I said, put it up. She says, you don't understand. I got tattoos all over my neck. I said, I could care less about them tattoos. You get that hair, baby. You want to put your hair up? You put your hair up. Just about every service, I see her come out of her pew. Tattoos, arms, legs, neck, face. Come out, shout. God's been good to me because a preacher told me the truth and didn't lie to me. This text it was a day when the lines of distinction had been erased. I got so much to preach, I got to go. You couldn't tell the holy from the unholy. You couldn't tell the profane from the holy. They had blurred the lines. I'm going to tell you something. I was raised in a preacher's home. I remember being a little boy and having preachers come over to our house. I remember my mom and dad sending me to bed. And I'd hear them talking. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. I'd lay in bed and I'd hear him talking. 
And I couldn't stay in bed. I could I couldn't sleep. I'd get out of bed, a little boy, and I wouldn't turn the lights on. I'd get out of my room. And I'd walk down the hall and I'd lay down. I'd lay down in the hall. And I would listen. And I would think in my heart, God, I want to be a preacher. I want to be with a preacher. I want to be with a man of God. I remember as a little boy, I'd pray in the altar. I'd pray in the altar. And I remember, I can remember this. I, I'd open one eye. And I'd say, oh God, let the preacher come by. Let the preacher come by and touch me. Let the man of God come by. And... I love you, God, but I love that preacher. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on in these preachers, but I don't want to sleep. I don't want to be in my room. I don't even know what they're talking about. I don't even care. I just I want to be around the preacher. I want to know what's going on in the preacher's world. And I'd hear him talk. I'd listen to him talk. And I'd say, Oh God, if you can use me, please put your hands on me. I'd go to conferences like this. I remember, I remember saying, God, I don't care what I gotta do in this world. I just want you to know if you're looking for somebody. I'll never be tall. I'll, ne- I'll never be tall in stature. I'm, I'm dumb. I'm not intelligent. I'm not talented. I can't even dance. But God, if you want to use somebody, You're still looking for a man. It's a day of false prophets. I want to remind you this morning. It is still Acts 238 or hell. There's still only one God, and His name is Jesus. It's still holiness within, and holiness without. It's still here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. We're not trying to fit into this world. We're trying to save this world. I said we're trying to save a world. And we're not going to save them if we're just like them. Twenty-eighth verse. Said the prophets have dobbed them with untempered murder. Glib tongued preachers. That are called by their wallet. That are silver tongued orders. Whose knee has never felt the pressure of submission. Speak like an angel in the pulpit. But are afraid to name sin. And they're trying to smooth over the ills of society. With untempered mortar. Trying to whitewash the gap. Trying to cover it up with paint. 
The problem with untempered mortar is that it'll never hold you in a storm. It'll never give you a footing that you can stand on. It'll never help you when the devil's breathing down your neck. But thank God for the men of God that's represented by this house that says I'm going to preach it to you. But baby, it ain't going to be a bunch of fluff and stuff. But it's going to hold you in the middle of a storm. God needs an inner Cesar for this generation. I'm almost through. I believe it's been said this week, but I'm saying it again, that you are the generation upon whom the ends of the world has come. I believe that inside this house today, are going to be the greatest preachers that's ever graced apostolic pulpits. The greatest soul winners that's ever taught a Bible study. The greatest missionaries that's ever answered a call to go to a foreign land. Bishop Kuhn, I'm not afraid of this generation. I'm not fearful. Although winds blow, and rain falls, there is some conviction that's in the heart of this generation like I have never seen in all of my life. I remind myself often that I was not a young person in this generation. I was not a teenager when homosexuality was being promoted openly. I was not a teenager when the pop songs were sung by a girl. I kissed a girl and I liked it. I remember being in a circuit city not too long ago and they played that song. And I, w- I went to a salesman and I said, I am sick of that song. Turn it off. My wife was with me. I said, I don't want to hear about no queer girl kissing another queer girl saying, I like it. That ain't right. That ain't the book. That ain't normal. That ain't godly. (laughs) Girls, you want to kiss another girl? You go kiss your mama. notes and now we got now we got these twinkie boys pants so tight walk. I'm waiting for them to pull out a glove out of their pocket. Start walking back. (laughs) Metrosexual, messed up looking, full of the devil's spirit. Come on, men. Get some gravel in your throat and gargle it like a man. (laughs) If it's too tight, Get a bigger pair. If you can't bend over and pray, don't wear it. (laughs) Now, now the boys, now the boys are saying, well, pastor, If the girls can wear their skirts below their knee. (laughs) 
Why can't we wear pants below? I'm going to tell you something. Those are called shorts. Pants sit on top of your shoes. I don't want to look at your hairy leg. You don't do nothing for me. What would you think of the man of God coming out of the altar with his pants all jacked up and his hair off? Look like an explosion in a master's factory. looking for a man, not a sissy. God's looking for a man, not a mouse. God's looking for a man that says, God, use me. God's looking for an intercessor that says, if they walk away, I'm still going to pray. If they all go eat again, I'm still going to pray. God's not done with me. God's hands on me. I'm feeling a call of God. I've got to do something about generation. When God was going to wipe out the world, he found a Noah. When the Midianites oppressed the people, God found a Gideon. When David sinned, God sent a preacher by the name of Nathan. When Pharaoh oppressed the people, God found a Moses. And when Goliath said, I defy the armies of God, God said, I've got a young man somewhere that's going to knock you out. He's going to throw it and I'm going to direct it. I believe. Here's where I wanted to get, and I'm almost through. I believe that the Holy Ghost is doing a specific work in this meeting. I believe that God is raising up an army of young preachers. I was up at two this morning. My wife was doing her best to sleep. And I held my Bible. And I said, God, Put your word in our spirit and put the call of the gospel on the lives of young men. If you wonder why there's such a struggle among young preachers today, it's because there has never been as challenging an hour is the hour that's presented itself. I am a 52 year old man, the Erskine, with the Tiller. I know young men are stronger, but I am working with every ounce of my strength that I have. I've had my friends tell me, if you would just stay home longer, you would build the biggest church in Southern California. And I say, I want to. But there's six billion people. What do I do with this hole in my heart about the Philippines? What do I do with the tug of God that's on my spirit? What do I do when I'm at the point of exhaustion? I took a man with me, a young man out of my church. He's not a preacher, but he went with me a week or so ago. To
to the Philippines on the plane. I said, Brother Aubrey, you better get ready for any. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm telling you anything. They may ask you to preach every service. He said, I'm not a preacher. I said, they don't care. You just better be ready. And a week ago Sunday, between he and I, we had five services where God filled people with the Holy Ghost. And we were baptizing them in an ocean. I saw young brother Aubrey, a young Filipino man that was brought out of a Filipino gang. He was a huge car thief in San Diego. I could talk to you about him. He said, what do I do? I said, you get up there and ask God to help you. And I watched him stand barefooted way up in the mountains because we trudged through so much mud. He said, I can't put mud on that humble little platform. I said, get up there barefooted. And he got up there barefooted. And I watched the Holy Ghost go... And we sit here and peek and we rejoice for the goodness of God. But I've come to talk to some young men, uh, some young men that's feeling a stirring uh, and a calling in your spirit. Uh, it's time to quit running uh, from the call of God uh, because the Holy Ghost uh, is moving specifically in this meeting this week. Uh, it's time somebody says, uh, all right, God. reason there's so much struggle among young preachers today is because hell only fights what it fears. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell, let, me, let me tell you about this emergent church stuff. Let me hit it really quickly. Emergent church is just another way of saying rebellion. They don't want a man of God. They say we're old fashioned. We're out of touch. We're old fogey. And, and, and supposed one name, one God, Jesus name, supposed apostolic churches where I live, where I live, women on pants, in pants on the platform. Preacher Bob sitting on a little bar stool with a shirt hanging out, trying to be cool. I'm saying, God, don't put my soul in the hands of preacher Bob. I don't care if he's going to walk on a cane and get to that pulpit. Just keep a man of God in my life that knows how to get on his face and hear from God. Keep the prophet. Come on, come on. God's going to raise up an elite car. God called heaven sent. Holy Ghost anointed. Devil binding. Sin rebuking. Holiness preaching. You're not crazy, young man. You're not crazy. It's the greatest thing ever happened to you. It's when you say, God, I don't know how it's going to happen. Second Kings 2. Almost through. Elisha said, man of God, man of God, man of God, man of God, I don't understand you all the time. I don't understand you all the time. Pastor, sometimes I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Pastor Young, sometimes I just don't understand. But I want, I want what you got. I want what you got. I don't have it all figured out.
But I want that anointing. I want that call of God. I want it. I want it. And Elijah said, Elijah, stay here. Stay here. And it wasn't rebellion. It was hunger. It's, oh, 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 no. I, I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm sorry. If you're going, I'm going. If you're praying, I'm praying. If you're fasting, I'm fasting. Stay. No, you need to stay here. No, you don't, you don't understand. There's nobody else in my world I want, but I want the hand of the man of God on my life. Please, 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 please. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, Brother Goder here. Brother Goder, would you come help me? Please. Would you come help me, please? Please. Brother Wilson, come on. You need to help me too. Come on. What do you want? I know. I know sometimes I'm questioning. Come help me, brother. I know sometimes I've questioned. I just know sometimes I've fought you. But if you really want to know what I want, I want twice what you want. I'm not arrogant, man of God. I'm not cocky. But I want to build twice the church you built. I want to reach twice the amount of people you reached. I want to pray like you pray. Come on, Elisha, I gotta go. What is it that you really want? I want you to know I want a double portion of what you got. That's all I want. I just got to have the anointing. I'm telling you, don't leave the man of God. Don't leave the man of God. When Elijah started following, there was 50 other young men that looked at him. Let 50 other men talk. Let them mock. Let them talk. But stay with the man of God. Because there's an anointing that's going to come. Know the story. A whirlwind. And I can see Elisha. You preached it. What's going to happen the day that where the puck is gone? The God, I love you. But if God tarries, one day your voice is going to be silent. Because you will say, not that much older than me. But if God delays his coming, one day your voice is going to be memory. And I'm thinking, Of all the curses of a prophet, the greatest curse was to take his mantle to the grave with him. Because there was no successor. Brother Erskine, I don't know a harder working man than you. 
I don't know a guy whose heart beats to build churches. But who? Who's going to pick up the man? I hear the Holy Ghost thundering in my heart. I'm looking for a man. Somebody that's willing to say, go ahead and eat without me. Because something's happening in my heart. I don't even understand at all. But here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. I've not been raised in church. I don't have a known name. I don't have any money in my pocket. I'm not skilled in anything. But oh, God. If you could use anybody. I wasn't raised in church, God. I got junk in my past. But oh, 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 God. I'll intercede, I'll intercede, I'll intercede for my generation. Come on, Tulsa. God's here looking for men. He's looking for young ladies. Say, I'll cast my lot with God. I wonder if you would help me for just a minute. It's so congested here, but please help me. I feel this. If you that are up here right now could just kind of move to the right, to my right, your left, over here, stay with me. I want to open this up right here for young men and young women. definitely feel a call of God on their life to ministry. I'm especially feeling a burden to pray for young men. You may never have yet acknowledged it, but you know in your heart the hand of God is on me. I don't know what to do with it, but oh, Could you stand for a minute, brethren? Young men that are in this altar, would you stand with me? Because I want to ask our elders up here if you would come. I want these elders on this altar, a platform to help me. Somewhere you're going to have to learn to get your hand on the mantle. And say, man of God, man of God. I don't care where you're going, what you do. Elder Wayne McLean, is that you? Could you come help me, sir? I need elders that's here if you would come on this platform and help me right now. Would you come help me? Please, my I can't see good. 
please, I need you. I need your help. We've got some animals that need to be transferred to a generation. I look for me. Outside for a man. But I couldn't find anybody. But God's looking today in Tulsa on Friday. These young people at this altar saying, oh, Would I get that mantle? I'm going to be like Elisha. I'm going to go back to the Jordan. I'm going to go back to prayer. I'm going to go back to the old paths. I'm going to go back to an anointing. I'm going to go back to consecrate. I'm going back. Would you lift your voice in this sanctuary? Destinies are being written right now. Destinies are being written. I need you, men of God, to help me pray. Bible symbols, symbolic objects, the rainbow, a symbol of God's covenant, a stairway, a symbol of the way to God, thunder, lightning, clouds, and smoke, symbols of God's majesty, thunder, a symbol of God's voice. Trumpets, a symbol of God speaking. The pillar of cloud and fire, a symbol of guidance. A throne, a symbol of God's glory. Dry bones, a symbol of spiritual death. White hair, a symbol of wisdom. The wind, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Fire, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Stars and lampstands, symbols of God's ministers. A signet ring, a symbol of authority. Arrows, symbols of God's judgments. A scepter, a symbol 
of God's rule. The capstone, a symbol of preeminence. A rock, a symbol of stability. The human body, a symbol of interdependence. Grass, a symbol of human frailty. Symbolic creatures, the serpent, a symbol of Satan's subtlety. Locus, a symbol of God's judgment. Beast, symbols of earthly kingdoms. A dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. A slam, a symbol of Jesus Christ sacrifice. Symbolic actions, breaking a jar, a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem. The cursing of a fig tree, a symbol of judgment. Washing hands, a symbol of innocence. Being thirsty, a symbol of spiritual need. Baptism, used for salvation, and a symbol of cleansing. The Lord's Supper, a symbol of union with Christ. Anointing, a symbol of empowering by God's Spirit. Harvesting, a symbol of judgment day. Tearing garments, a symbol of anger and sorrow. Spitting, a symbol of contempt. Shaking off dust, a symbol of rejection. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes, a symbol of repentance. Lifting of hands, a symbol of prayer. Covering the head, a symbol of submission. Symbols expressing God's nature and character, God's face, a symbol of His presence. God's arm or hand, a symbol of His power. God's eye, a symbol of His awareness. God's ear, a symbol of God's listening. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Our God, a firm foundation, our rock, the only solid ground. As nations rise and fall, kingdoms once strong now shaken, but we trust.